Hi, I am very excited to uh, be able to connect all these devices here in different ways. I am going to show you different methods of connecting them, different setups, computer-based setups and hardware only setups using for instance this hardware uh, sequencer i've got a drum machine analog synthesizer some midi controllers some digital stuff and a piano and a big synthesizer there yeah uh, and i've got some midi solutions units uh, through boxes and mergers and midi processors and i'm going to use them to connect all these devices with midi cables so let's start so i'll start with a very simple setup i have arturia bitstep pro a hardware sequencer that outputs MIDI signal simultaneously to all three devices here. Uh, it only has one MIDI output, so I'm using MIDI Solutions Quadra through to duplicate this MIDI stream at four different outputs. So, uh, well, I connected uh, Minotaur using the black cable, so Minotaur ignores everything except the information on the first MIDI channel. Uh, then I have this Springer Model D which ignores everything except the information on the second MIDI channel. And then there is the drum root that, you know, by default accepts MIDI signal on channel 10 because it's a drum machine. So it's that simple. And this does not require any power, so we can use it just straight away, but just by plugging in your MIDI cable. And it's very, very simple. Well, of course, sometimes you can also use uh, CV output if you have those on your MIDI sequencer. You can also use MIDI through like with this Behringer. I could plug in another synthesizer here, but sometimes it's not possible. So duplicated MIDI data, MIDI stream is, is, is the perfect solution. And I'm using the fourth channel here, the, the fourth uh, MIDI out to record my uh, data to the to, to, to computer so I can then uh, so that I, I can then edit it. So that's great. So how do I know that the Minotaur works on with channel 1? Well, I just checked it uh, on the, in the manual and it says it only accepts MIDI signal on channel 2. So how do I know that the Behringer takes only information on channel 2? Well, I set it to take information on channel 2 by using those switches uh, at the back and the drum root only accepts MIDI, MIDI signal on channel 10 and you can change it using the special application but you, can, you have to connect it uh, with the USB cable. So this is how it works, it's different with every synthesizer. This one for instance, uh, you have to set it in the menu, so directly from the hardware. So you just have to check uh, your hardware, your manual. MIDI solutions merger, MIDI solutions merger, MIDI solutions. So let's imagine something a little bit more complicated you like to record the output of your hardware sequencer and simultaneously the output of your MIDI keyboard so you need a device that will merge those two signals into one output or two outputs in that case so let's record that So as you can hear, currently everything I play here from the sequencer and from the keyboard is being recorded on the Ableton Live. So it works just perfectly. In case your favorite sound module or your audio interface has only one MIDI input and you'd like to connect a multiple MIDI devices, multiple MIDI controllers to that MIDI input, you need a MIDI merger device. And a perfect uh, solution, perfect uh, example is MIDI Solutions Quadra Merge. Uh, so currently I'm using Arturia Bitstep Pro to, uh, to fuel Polyplex with MIDI uh, data. I'm also using it uh, for Monarch. Uh, and I can use uh, some other devices on different channels so I can, so I can for instance, add Prism to that and a MIDI keyboard which is used for this prism and it sends MIDI information, MIDI data on channel 3. So now I can play, I can even switch uh, all those MIDI patterns programmed here.
so it works just brilliantly for me. Currently I'm using MIDI Solutions T8 to send a single MIDI data stream from Machina computer based system, this is just a MIDI controller, to all those devices here. So actually each and every device here receives the same MIDI data stream but I set them so that they can receive uh, and process information on a specific MIDI channel. So for instance you can hear bass here from Minotaur on channel 1, we've got also some keys, channel 5, and also a beautiful pad here, and additionally there is channel 4 here, Matrix Brute, hope you can hear it now, and of course some drums on channel 10. I also set up my Behringer, so that uh, it can use MIDI from Machina on channel 2. Let me show you how. I can also use the built-in arpeggiator here. And it all works really, really well. So, it's a very good solution, very good MIDI solution. Uh, if you want to, if you need more MIDI throughs, um, there is also an additional benefit. If you daisy chain devices with MIDI throughs, uh, MIDI through outputs, uh, the MIDI signal can degrade over time and there might be some errors. And using uh, some through boxes, they eliminate the problem, uh, especially MIDI solutions, because they read it in and re clock the MIDI signal out so that there is no uh, no MIDI uh, no MIDI signal loss uh, it's perfect every time so as you can hear it works really really well that's it if you notice I'm looking a bit different it's just because I had a haircut Well, of course, uh, you can use MIDI solutions and your hardware with any DAW, like with Ableton Live, for instance, and uh, you can make a push controller, you know, a centerpiece of your, of your setup. Uh, but before I, before I show you how I did it with Ableton, just I would like to talk very, very briefly about a few other devices that are on offer with uh, MIDI uh, device, MIDI solutions, sorry. So let's jump to, to that. So, so far I was mainly using mergers and through boxes, but there are some other interesting products like uh, foot switch controllers. Uh, so you plug the MIDI in, MIDI out, and you've got uh, foot switch input, and you can program it to send whatever MIDI uh, message you like. You can download MIDI solutions programming tools for free which I strongly encourage you to do so we can see what's possible. Uh, you just click full switch controller and uh, you can see that you can generate MIDI on, control change, pitch band, you can program change, you can start stop your sequencer with the foot switch, you can also you know rechannelize, so change temporarily a channel that the MIDI goes to, and you can also transpose temporarily. Really cool for playing live. Uh, so there is a dual foot switch version and uh, eight uh, foot switch version so this is really cool there are also relays uh, more kind of electrical device uh, it can be used for instance to change a channel in your guitar amp so that's nice uh, event processors very cool i will talk about it just in a minute very cool and also you've got the pedal controller so same as with foot switch but you can use uh, expression pedal to smoothly change you know a filter cutoff or whatever you like in your synthesizer um, and this is really cool because you can use also standard potential potentiometers of resistance from 10k to 
100k so we can make you, you know your own custom midi controller this is really cool uh, really cool is also the velo velocity converter it, it has 40 preset curves and it can be set per channel very cool and there are also some utility devices you know a midi delay if you need it you've got a bit indicator it just flashes if you plug a midi clock here and also uh, there are some programmable input and output selector also sometimes you know needed when playing live uh, so having a full switch you can decide uh, the MIDI messages to be routed from either of its two inputs uh, to the output and the same with the programmable output selector but the other way, way around so that's basically it and now I'll show you this event processor So with my setup, I have a sort of a problem because I found out that the Minotaur only works on channel one and my piano also works on channel one. So it receives only on channel one. I could theoretically change that using the software, but I couldn't make the software work. So I decided I used the event processor to reroute the information from channel five to channel one. So uh, again, I used the MIDI solution programming tools. I went for event processor plus and I made this very simple settings, which is, which just filters the information on channel one, supposedly the, you know, the baseline. And uh, I also made it uh, to route notes on on channel 5 to notes on events on channel 1 and note of note of events on channel MIDI 5 to note of events on MIDI channel 1. Making those settings are really easy. You click generate settings, you choose what you like to do. You can filter a MIDI event, note on, you can choose all events and you just click, you just choose the number of the settings you can program. Uh, it can be used for 32 sorry 32 settings simultaneously so yeah lots of possibilities uh, and you just add the settings here and then you can just program the your device by clicking transmit settings that's all you have to do so now i'll show you my uh, ableton live setup i just click play and let's have some fun so as you can see there are some instruments playing some of them are being triggered by the MIDI messages on those red uh, MIDI channels and some other sounds are coming from the computer these are those blue uh, uh, blue tracks so for instance you can hear that the mini nova is playing now and also the piano is playing uh, I've got the bass line played uh, simultaneously unisono on the Minotaur and also on this beautiful Matrix Brute. I could not decide uh, which one to use so I <laughs> used both for the bass line. Uh, of course the drum, drum Brute, very nice synthesizer uh, and that's about it. And all of those devices you know, are just raw sounds, no processing except for the Behringer, which is routed through the Ableton Live via external instrument plugin with the, some echo. I will show you in a minute. Yeah, let's play the Behringer. That's about all I wanted to show you. So I admit I had a lot of fun playing with the MIDI solutions and all this equipment. Thank you guys.